Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Better brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you a right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, greet Prisca and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I am grateful, but also all the churches of the Gentiles greet. To whom not only I am grateful, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church at their house. Greet my beloved Epinetus who was the first fruits in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives and my fellow prisoners. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachus. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord, Gaius, who is host to me, and to the whole church greets you, Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother, Quartus, greet you. Now to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, Lord. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Every day will I bless you, and I will bless, bless and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor, although he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones, and the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to you, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one 
or love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Pharisees who loved money heard all these things and sneered at him and said to him, You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The parable, the Gospel yesterday and today is one of the more difficult parables and narrative to really understand. In fact, many, um, they say, even including St. Augustine, uh, was trying to understand it and having difficulty in terms of understanding why would the Lord in a parable like today kind of praise a dishonest servant? What is really the story here? Is he really praising a dishonest servant or is he praising something else? And it, but I think that's the beauty of parables. When we talk about parables, we always talk about the moral of the story. So what really is the story? What can we get from the story? So we focus on that. What can we get from the parable today? Christ talking about dishonest wealth. We focus on that one line that is very important you cannot serve God and mammon you cannot serve God and mammon when we say God is my God and I praise and worship nobody else except God the implication is my life my thoughts my words, my actions, my choices, my decisions, all of that are influenced by my praise and worship of God. In other words, I would always be conscious every time I do things, little things every day, as we always say, holiness is in the daily events of life. Driving. Am I giving praise and glory to God? All my choices will be influenced by that desire. Working for the family. Waking up early in the morning because you want to work. You want to provide for your family. Does it give praise and honor and glory to God? All our thoughts, our minds, our actions, our choices and decisions are influenced by our desire to love and praise God. Outside of that, we have to start questioning ourselves. Why do you do things the way I do them? Then we go back to what the Lord today says. You can serve God and mammon. If our choices and decisions in lives are influenced not by our love for God, but by something else, then maybe what the Lord is saying today is right in our lives. If wealth influences us to do evil, wealth influences us to decide on many things, then maybe the Lord is right. Wealth is our God. It is not always true, you know, when we say wealth or money is the root of all evil. It's not, it's not really true. What we say is, what do we do with it? Because wealth is only a means. The difference really is in the end, what do we do with what we have? Remember that parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You know, one of the stories in the gospel. Christ said in the end, when both of them died, the rich man went to eternal punishment and Lazarus went to heaven. And so people were asking, 
why would Lazarus go to heaven and the rich man go to eternal punishment? Is it because Lazarus was poor, therefore he went to heaven, and the rich man was wealthy, therefore he went to eternal punishment? The Lord said, no. But rather, it was because the rich man was so preoccupied with his wealth that he did not even notice other people around him. If you notice, the rich man was not unfair to Lazarus. He did not drive Lazarus away. He was not violent to Lazarus. Lazarus was there by his gate every day. But did the rich man notice him? Did the rich man notice how needy Lazarus was? That Lazarus was sick? That Lazarus was hungry? That Lazarus was in need of something? Did the rich man notice it? The gospel says, no. Why? Because his preoccupation was something else. The rich man's preoccupation was his wealth. Negligence of others because of our preoccupation of wealth. And so again, this is what the moral of the story today is. We go back to that very important point. We cannot serve both God and mammon. If God is my God, then all my choices, decisions, actions in lives will be influenced by that desire to keep loving God all the more. That my life becomes a proclamation of the glory of God. Outside of that, I will have to start questioning myself. Maybe money is my God. If money influences all my choices and actions in life, money is my God. If fame and power influences all my choices and decisions in life, fame is my God. But if we know that from the time we wake up in the morning until the time we go back to bed at night, that we know and we are conscious every moment of it that everything we do, we do it for the greater glory of God, then we know God is my God and I am worshipping nobody else but God and therefore I will not allow anything else and anybody else to influence my thoughts and decisions in life except God himself because I serve only God and only God. And so in our Mass today, we pray for that gift. You know, we we get distracted many times of many things. As I said, um, the rich man, he was not unfair, he was not violent, he was not, you know, uh, unjust, but he was kind of neglectful of the situation of others because he was preoccupied of something else. He wasn't preoccupied of God. He was preoccupied of wealth. He was preoccupied of fame that he forgot there were other people around him. And so we pray for that gift, that God would always help us understand and see that there are people around us, people around us <clears throat> who need us, who need our love, who need our attention, who need our forgiveness, who need our care to be there. We need money, yes, we cannot buy a gallon of milk with one Hail Mary. They will ask your credit card. But we also know that there are many things we can do with good life. Many things we can do with being there for our family. Caring, even presence. We don't even have to say anything. To just be there. To let them know that my choices and lives are dictated by my love for God. And because I am here for you, I am willing to spend my day with you. It is because my love for God is expressed in my love for you. <clears throat> In calling upon our most merciful Lord, let us now lay our prayers before him. We pray for Pope Francis, for bishops and priests, 
May the Holy Spirit lead them in using <clears throat> their God-given gifts to build up the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all nations. May the peace of Christ become manifest among them and bring an end to war and conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all who are facing adversity or burden of any kind. May Jesus calm their fears and bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for those who minister to the sick. We pray for all our frontliners who care for the sick, especially those who care for afflicted with the virus. May God's grace strengthen them in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our beloved dead. May they find peace and comfort in the arms of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. And today we pray in a very special way for all the souls in purgatory, those whom we are praying for in our All Souls Day in Novena. We pray for the intentions of Patrick and Chris Dolan, and we pray for John James Devaney. For whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, those whom we promise to pray for, we keep praying for an end to the pandemic. We pray for our families and our loved ones, for safety and protection of our families. And also I would like to entrust to you, um, I have a, a friend, a priest, we were together in the seminary uh, when we were seminarians. We were also together in the seminary when we were assigned to work in the seminary. He was the rector of our high school seminary back home in the Philippines. He just died the other day. He had been battling with colon cancer. He's a young priest. Um, he died uh, the other. Please uh, pray for him and for his family. Father Marlon Gacho. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Ever loving and gracious Father, we humbly pray that you bless the petitions we place before you today through Christ, O Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, Almighty Father. <laughs> May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, O Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. 
And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. Without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, we please to you throughout the ages. We merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and for me divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, for every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
our spiritual communion. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that Amen. you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ, O Lord. Amen. There will be a charismatic generational healing mass on Tuesday, November 9th. The praise and worship begins at 6.30, and the Mass, the Healing Mass, starts at 7. It will be held in the church uh, here in our parish. So, Healing Mass on Tuesday, November 9th. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a beautiful day to everyone.